All right. Good afternoon and happy Monday, mga KILS, mga ka Earth and Life Science. So welcome po sa panibagong session or our itulay online tutorial session for senior high school Earth and Life Science. So we are now on week number seven. So actually, class this is actually the the last topic na. So next week, uh, magkaroon tayo ng review ng mga diniscuss natin. But for the meantime, mag-focus tayo sa topic na ito. So our topic for week number seven interaction and interdependent. So live na live na po tayo ngayon mapapanood sa DepEd EdTech Unit Facebook page at sa YouTube channel ng DepEd EdTech Unit at saka ng DepEd TV official. So sana ma-share, ma-like ninyong broadcast na ito para mas marami pang maabot ng mga senior high school learners. So good afternoon po sa mga senior high school learners natin as well as sa ating mga parents and guardians na patuloy na gumagabay sa ating mga learners. All right, so we are still on the last week of uh, June, and we are still celebrating the Philippine Environment Month uh, with the theme, Sama-samang pagkilos, sama-samang paghilom, ikaw, ako, tayo ang kalikasan. So patuloy po tayong uh, gawin, patuloy po natin gawin ang ating mga makakaya, maliit man yan, or malaking effort para makapag-contribute sa pag-preserve at pag-conserve ng ating environment. All right, so as... Always, so we are using uh, the pivot module, Calabar Zone module provided by Vision for Inga. Uh, and for this particular session, we'll be using the last module, module number 30, entitled Interaction and Interdependence. So, na-excite ako, bakit kaya? <laughs> Ayan. So, are you all ready for our session? Samahan niyo ako sa sunod na 40 minutes. Kailangan natin na if you have your pen and paper with you, if you have the copy of your module or yung mga learning activity sheets provided by your respective teachers, pwede yan. And of course, presence of your mind and presence of your heart. And please, please, please interact with me by uh, utilizing our comments section provide nyo lang yung mga shout outs mga pabate sa, and then please indicate the name of your school and of course your location para ma-acknowledge natin kayo mamaya sa ating mga quick na pabate alright so I think we are all ready so let's have a quick review lang na ating session that we had last week so Last week, uh, tayo ay naging mga evolutionary biologist. Wow. <laughs> because we discussed about evolution. So evolution, as we have uh, learned, is the way that living things or a population of living things change over time. So nagbabago ang genetic material and of course, nagbabago na ang anatomy and morphology and other uh, unifying themes ng isang living organism. Nakalala na rin natin or nireview natin kung sino ang um, si Charles Darwin at kung anong uh, contribution niya, main contribution niya sa, sa mundo ng agham or ng science. So he is an English naturalist. And if you would remember, uh, naglakbay siya, di ba? And because of that voyage, uh, he was able, with his team, he was able to uh, to observe many uh, fossil records, many ano, uh, living things. And he arrived with, uh, with his theory of natural selection. Okay. And sa sa mga na-observe niya mga animals or mga living organisms, of course, is yeah, mga finch, mga kinds of birds. He noticed na ang kanilang beak, of course, ay naka-adapt yan sa anong klaseng diet or anong klaseng food ang kinakain nila. And as well as, ayan, organisms like the tortoise or the land turtles. And of course, the marine iguana and the land iguana. So in-observe na yun and compare niya sa nagiging, uh, ano ba ito, uh, tawag ito, behavior. Uh, and saka sa diet, di ba? May mga land iguanas na iba yung diet compared sa mga marine iguanas. Alright, so we are very fortunate to have uh, the contributions of Charles Darwin in the concept or in the science of evolution. So right now, ang pinaka-focus natin ay ecology naman. So we will be ecologists this week, okay? And our objectives, objectives are the following. First is we have to identify biotic factors and abiotic factors. And we have to categorize, ayan, ito yung mga uh, keywords natin for this week. So we have biotic potential and environmental resistance. Alright? So biotic potential and environmental resistance. So good afternoon sa ating mga viewers, mga masisipag, mga agap na viewers, just like my co-tutors, Sir Yanni Marquez. Good afternoon, sir. And Liz Monzolin, hello, good afternoon po sa inyo. Like and share our stream para mas maraming matuto. Ayan, so I think you're familiar with the, 
with the term or the phrase, no man is an island. So, ano ba na no man is an island? So, every living thing, including us, of course, rely upon one another and the environment. So, no living creature, tandaan, could make you all alone without relying upon different living beings and its environment. Particularly tayo mga tao, of course, we rely with our families, we rely with our friends, of course, and of Siyempre, hindi rin mawawala. We rely on other organisms para mabuhay. So, dyan papasok yung terms natin na interaction and interdependence. These are the two important relationships in nature. Diba yung relationship na iniisip ninyo? Ha? So, focus tayo sa interaction at saka interdependence. Okay? Ayan. So, isa, isa sa rin sa mga key terms natin for this afternoon is the word ecology. Ayan. Yeah. So, ecology is the branch of biology that deals with the study of these relationships of interaction and interdependence between, tandaan, living things and their environment. So, tandaan na, pag sinabing living things, hindi lang tayo mga tao, nandiyan yung mga animals, mga plants, and even microorganisms, and how we interact with the environment para tayo ay makasurvive. Okay? The area where in living things associate with each other and with their environment is known as ecosystem. And association among species helps shape the ecosystem. Ayan. Oh, to give you an idea, ano bang ginagawa ng mga ecologists? Ayan. So they test water samples. They observe uh, the nature. Ayan. They also perform uh, mga chemical uh, tests. Ayan. So isa yan, yan yung mga uh, usually ginagawa ng ecologists. And uh, the data that they have, they are gathered or being shared, ayan, all throughout the scientific community. Para siyempre mapag-aralan at ma magamit kung ano yung konsepto na nakuha dun sa mga pag-aaral na yun. Right? So I hope uh, in the future, in college, pwede kayo mag-take ng mga environmental science courses. So meron tayong mga ganyang courses sa Pilipinas. So might as well, kung mahilig kayo sa ecology or sa uh, environment in general, you can take uh, those courses. Right? Ayan, so ano bang mga ecosystem yung mga usually yung alam natin? So we have marine ecosystems, we have the desert ecosystem, of course, Africa. Ayan, so we have the savanna or the grassland. And of course, uh, North Pole at sa South Pole. Ayan, so we have the polar region, mga ecosystems natin sa polar regions. Ayan, are you familiar with this? Uh ecosystem or yan, particular plant na yan. Nakakita na ba kayo ng ganyang plant? So I hope you can utilize the chat box, no? You can answer. Huwag kayong mahiya. Huwag kayong uh, mag-hesitate na mag-guess or mag-say ng answer ninyo. Ayan. So ano kayang halaman yan? Okay? So actually, that is called the mangrove or the bakawan or bakawan. Okay? So ano ba yung... Uh, uh, importance ng mga bakawan or ng mga mangroves. So actually, this mangroves, along with the other, of course, factors, they, uh, they form an ecosystem. And on those ecosystems, of course, as you can see, so it's since it's a marine ecosystem, it provides a shelter sa mga different forms of living organisms. And that brings us to our first activity, module 30, page 4, as found on page 4 of the Peabot module. So you are being asked, List down some living things and non-living things shown in the picture. So, yeah, medyo visible naman yan, no? yung picture, no? I made the largest version na possible sa, sa ating PowerPoint presentation. Of course, you have different bird species. Ayan, yeah, may mga heron dyan. May mga nagmamigrate na birds or the migratory birds. Of course, we have the marine uh, creatures like fish, starfish. What else can you see? And yeah, we have a kind of crab, the hermit crab. Meron din mga microorganisms na nakatira sa, sa pinaka-soil. Meron din tayong mga mollusk or the mga soft-bodied animals na may shell. Ayan, nandiyan, nakakapit sa mga uh, specialized roots and stems ng mga mangroves. I can see the crab also here living on this ecosystem. Alright, uh, so that brings us to the two terms. I hope you can still remember, no? So, madali lang naman. So, pag sinabi natin biotic, so from the word bio, it means life. So, this refers to the living things, which includes plants, animals, and microorganisms. Pag sinabi natin abiotic factors naman, these are the non-living factors like water, air, light, or sunlight, and other factors na mention natin mamaya that affects the living things. So, nagkakaroon nga ng interaction at saka ng interdependence. So let's try to answer. Ayan. The 
first guide question. So it says here, what is the interaction between living things and non-living things? Actually, there are a lot of interactions. So one of the major interactions na nangyayari sa mga ecosystem, of course, is yung mga food chains natin at saka mga food web. The eating relationship or the eating interactions among living things. Ayan. So meron tayong food chain, meron tayong mga food web, and of course, uh, mga nangyayari sa, sa environment or sa particular habitat ng mga living things, ayan, so nakaka-apekto yun so kung paano mag-behave at paano hahanap ng paraan ang mga living organisms para sila ay mag-survive. Ayan, so that's one of the one of those interactions that we can uh, answer sa ating module. Pangalawang question natin, our second question says, how dependent are we on other organisms and the environment? So, are we really dependent? The answer is yes, of course. So we rely or we depend on the environment or sa other organisms for, say, for example, number one, food. Diba? So wala naman tayong pagkukunan ng uh, pagkain kasi we are not capable of making our own food except the plants, diba? Tulad ng mga plants, so kaya nilang gumawa ng na, na nilang sariling food. Ano pa? Number one, food, of course, habitat. And many other uh, uh, factors pa na pwede natin pag-aralan later on sa mga uh, next na slides natin. Right? Okay. Medyo tahimik ang ating ano, ah, chat box. Ayan, let's try to answer now. Let's move on with page number 5, activity number 2. Word hunt. Ayan. So alam ko mahilig kayong isa sa mga habits ng mga Pilipino, di ba? Mag-word search or mag-word hunt. Ayan. So I will be asking you to... To look for words, 10 words, na related sa ating uh, topic or discussion for this afternoon. So we have the words commensalism, community, competition, habitat, mutualism, niche or niche, parasitism, population, predator, and symbiosis. So since di naman to medyo limited lang yung time natin, no? so kapag word hunt or word search, syempre ang pinaka-technique natin dyan, ako, una-una ko, uh, pwedeng pa, pa horizontal, pa vertical, or pa diagonal. Okay? So to help you out in answering your modules, uh, reveal na natin ang, <laughs> ang mga answers. Alright, sige, reveal na natin. Ayan, so... For vertical, yung patayo, we have two words. You can find the words competition at saka symbiosis. For, for horizontal, we have the words community, population. We have the word mutualism. Ayan, tandaan yung mga words na yan. Mamaya ma matatakal natin yan. Parasitism, pred predator, <laughs> predator or predator. Habitat, commensalism, and niche. Ayan. So, pwede nyo, nyo ng screenshot yan or actually, you can answer naman sa module ninyo or sa mga learning activity, sheet, activity sheets nyo kasi napakadali lang ng task na yan. Alright? So, that's activity 2. And continuation activity 2, activity two natin, if you will uh, notice sa ating module, may mga fill in the blanks dyan. So, I will help you out in answering those items. So, first two items natin ay ang words for number one, we have the word community. And the second word is population. So ano ba yung difference ng population sa community? So medyo dyan kasi nalilito yung mga learners natin sa so mga nag-aaral ng ecosystems or mga eco uh, ng ecology, so mga beginning uh, learners natin. So when we say, uh, we will begin with population kasi mas maliit yung population. So number, number two, a group of organisms of similar species that live in a characterized territory, pag sinabi natin territory or yung pinaka-habitat niya, they form a population. So, tandaan, group of similar organisms. Okay, so in our diagram, we can say there is a population of lion. There's a population of lion. There's a population of giraffe. There's a population of deer, so mga gazelles dyan, and other animals like elephants, population of elephants. Vultures, and may mga lumilipad. May isa nag, nag feast sa isang uh, namatay na animal dito. Or a population of microorganisms living on soil. So that's population. Pag sinabi naman natin community, ayan, number one, different types of organisms that interact with one another in a given area form a community. So pag in-extend mo na within the population, 
kapag nakapag, nag, nakipag-interact na yung ibang organisms with the other organisms, ayan, pwede sa animals, pwede sa plants, or sa microorganisms, that forms a community. So itong nakikita natin to, the, here is an example of a community found on one particular area of uh, savanna sa, sa Africa. Mga African, uh, African animals kasi yan, if you will notice. Okay, so community and population. Third and fourth items... Ayan. So, as you can see, ayan, kilala nyo ba yung animal na yan? So, that is called a leaf cutter ant. So, magaling silang mag-cut ng leaf and they make use of that para gumawa ng kanilang shelter, pati bayan ng kanilang shelter. Sometimes they eat that. So, number three, the place or type of environment in which an organism or population lives is called, as I have mentioned earlier, it's called a habitat. Saan nakatira? So, in example ko yung ants kasi, paano ba? We can actually find ants in any, ano, different types of habitats. Of course, except sa mga aquatic habitats. So kahit saan ka magpunta, may langgam. Okay? Number four naman, the capacity of a life form or, tandaan, the role. Anong ginagampanan? Its place in the habitat is known as the ec ecological niche or niche. So ano ba yung role na ginagampanan ng isang particular organism? Are you a producer? Are you a consumer? Or are you a decomposer? Okay? And sana tayo mga learners, no? Even kaming mga adults, of course. So, sana ma-invite ma natin yung teamwork na pinapakita that we can observe sa mga ants, di ba? They, they possess teamwork. They possess discipline, di ba? Ayan. So, sana all throughout, konting tumbling na nga lang, sabi ni Sir Tony, di ba? Two weeks na lang. Natapos na natin ang school year 2020-2021 with God's grace. Alright? Let's now proceed with the next item, item number five. Interaction between two organisms of various species in which at any rate benefits is called, the word is, symbiosis. Okay? So symbiosis, let's define it, is any type of a close and long-term biological interaction between two different biological organisms. Dalawang magkaibang organisms. As you can see, ayan, pwede siyang mutualism tulad ng, ng, tulad ng nangyayari sa... Ayan, si Nemo, mga clownfishes natin. And with the sea anemone, so this mutualism. We'll know more about mutualism sa next item. Ha? So ano ba yung mutualism? Mutual, so bigayan yan. Next picture natin is we have here a fungus attached on a tree. So that's commensalism. So one organism benefits. And ito yung pangatlo, of course. One benefits and the other is harm. That is called parasitism. Ayan, so isahin natin yun, balikan natin. What is mutualism? Ito yung isa sa pinaka or pinaka magagandang relationship sa nature, sa environment. Because it is defined as a harmonious relationship wherein two life forms benefits. Kumbaga, give and take. One of the best examples, ayan, since mahilig ako sa plants at saka sa mga animals, pagsamahin na natin, ayan, yung mga insects pollinating the flowering plants, yung mga flowers ng flowering plants. Mutualism because uh, yung mga insects natin ay nakakakuha ng food, the nectar from the flowers. And of course, they help or provided by the plants by pollinating the flowers. Kasi kung walang mga pollinators like the insects, one of the primary pollinators in nature, they cannot reproduce. They cannot make fruits and maapektuhan tayong lahat. Okay? That's mutualism, the give and take relationship. Next is commensalism. So okay din naman tong commensalism kasi uh, the symbiotic relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is unaffected. So isa yung, yung isa nakikinabang while the other is unharmed. Okay? Ang example ko dito is yung mga, ayan, halaman na naman of course, mga tree uh, plants, uh, mga ferns na nag-grow sa mga branch ng tree. Ayan. So sino nakikinabang? Of course, the the ferns or yung mga small stand habitat yung nasa baba lang sila, nakocover sila ng plants. Another example, ayan, we have here a shark and a kind of fish called the remora. Ayan, remora. Okay? So, ang nakikinabang dito definitely, of course, is the remora, yung mga fish. So, they are, meron silang mga benefits like, number one, 
uh, free ride. Ayan. So, may free ride sila. So, naka-attach kasi sila sa sa katawan or sa body ng shark. Next is free food. Bakit free food? Kasi every time na kumakain yung shark, may mga may mga particles dyan, ano ba? Na pwede nilang kainin as the shark feeds on the the of uh the, the shark feed on its food and of course na pangato niyang benefit is wala niyo kaya insured yung mga remora kasi they are being protected so merong free protection syempre di ba sino ba yung mga nangangahas lang na sa animal kingdom or sa aquatic environment sino ba nangangahas na umatake sa sa shark wala kasi top predator ang shark uh, except sa sa ilang types na mga killer whales, ayan, mga killer whales, ayan, sila yung may mga lalakas na loob na pwede kumatakas sa shark. But other than the killer whales, ayan, wala na. So, free food, free ride, at saka free protection. Di ba? Saan ka pa? So, that is commensalism. Other is unharmed, the other one benefits. Number eight naman is parasitism. It is a symbiotic relationship in which one organism benefits while the other is unharmed. So, ito ayaw natin kasi... Ayaw natin tawagin na parasite. Pag sinabi ka, uy, parasite. <laughs> parasite ka. You depend on other organisms para mabuhay. And we don't want that. Of course, tama, uh, that is capital. Pero sa so the nature, let's face it, uh, these organisms or these interactions uh, exist. Just like yung mga blood-sucking insects like the mosquito, di ba? So that, that, that's, that is the, our parasite. Ang pinaka-host niya o yung pinaka-affected na organism is yung mga tao and other mammals. And of course, on the second picture, we have the tapeworms. Ayan, isa sa mga problema ng mga swine farmers natin, mga hog racers natin. Isa yung sa mga nagiging sakit ng mga, uh, mga pigs or ng mga baboy. Okay, so that's called parasitism. And let's end natin. Number nine is the missing word is predator. The feeding of one organism on another is called predation. Ayan. So predator is the cheetah, the fastest land animal, and of course his its prey is the the gazelle or it's a kind of deer. And number ten, ayan, our missing word is competition. So pag sinabi natin competition, this is an interaction when two species utilize a similar limited resource, pwedeng resource yan sa food, pwedeng mag-compete sa territory, pwedeng mag-compete sa mate, di ba? So, ayan. So, in this case, yung mga wolves, minsan kapag uh, may scarcity ng pagkain, ayan, they tend to compete for food. Although, ang mga, mga wolves naman kasi, uh, they hunt eh, in packs, kaya ang pack of wolves, di ba? They hunt in groups. Kung may dumay, kung baga may plano yan, may diskarte. But minsan, kinukurang ng pagkain. There's, So, nag-arise tayo sa competition. So, tandaan yung mga relationships na yun, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, and competition. So, meron din tayo na natawag yung positive, yung cooperation yun, sa mga social animals like bees and ants. Ayan. So, balik tayo sa term na ecosystem. This comprise, tandaan, ng living at saka non-living things na nag-interact on a particular territory. Every living piece of an ecosystem are called the biotic factors. So, tandaan yan, ha? Living things, biotic factors. Living organisms interact in the ecosystem to obtain food in order to survive. So, pag sinabi naman natin, abiotic, these are the non-living factors. Ayan. So, living creatures in a biological system can't be separated. So, pwede hindi pwede ma-isolate yun, di ba? Kasi nga, there's interaction and there should be interdependence between the biotic and abiotic factors. So, we are now ready to answer activity 3, page number 7. Alright, so madali lang to. So, we just have to classify uh, the words, whether they belong to the biotic factors or abiotic factors. So, let's make this quick. Learners, of course, our biotic factors, we have the tree. The dog, the bacteria, the cow. We also have grass, flower, farmer, fish, and chicken. For abiotic factors or the non-living factors, isa -isa natin, we have temperature, we have water, we have pH of the soil, pwedeng acidic yan or basic. We also have wind. When is also an abiotic factor. Carbon dioxide, of course, yung gas na release natin mga, mga animals. And we also have salinity of water, oxygen, and sunlight. 
Okay, so those are the biotic and abiotic factors. You can take a screenshot of this. Or actually, class, or remember, no, mga teachers and parents, you can uh, go back sa ating mga 8 tulay uh, online tutorial sessions. Pwede yung i-replay mamaya kasi nabobroadcast naman tayo na live din may replay. And then you can also take, uh, you can also download the copies of the PowerPoint presentations na ating mga 8 tulay tutors sa DepEd Commons website. All right, continuation na ating activity sa page seven, page number seven. Uh, okay, so we just had to group the biotic factors, whether they are the producers, consumers, or decomposers. Producers, of course, are the plants. They are capable of producing their own food. Consumers, tayo yon and other uh, forms of animals. Decomposers, the ones, are the ones decomposing the, the dead uh, bodies of living organisms. And for under producers, we have tree, grass, and flower. For consumers, we have dog, cow, farmer, fish, and chicken. And of course, the remaining uh, organism, bacteria, falls under the category of decomposers. Okay? So that's it. Ayan. So let's proceed na sa ating second objective, sa ating second uh, topic. Uh, let's recall or let's discuss biotic potential, and environmental resistance. So these are two opposite factors. Ha? So first, what is biotic uh, potential? Biotic potential is the rate at which life forms reproduce when they have perfect conditions that would advance effective generation. So biotic, so biotic, uh, living things, potential. Potential niyang mag-reproduce para makapagpatuloy pa siya ng kanyang... Uh, uh, species or ng kanyang lahi. But there should have uh, uh, conducive or perfect conditions. Ano yung mga conditions na yun? So yung example ko dito is yung mga rodents or yung mga daga. Kasi isa, isa sila sa mga may matataas na biotic potential. Why? Because they can reproduce very fast. Okay? So parang every month, ilang beses na nga nga na or pwedeng mga na or mag-reproduce ang mga daga. So, I think this one is, ito yung magiging, nagiging problema ng mga farmers natin sa Central Luzon, di ba? So, I think uh, na may feature na rin to sa isa sa mga documentary sa television. Ayan. So, problema nila sobrang dami ng daga kasi nga nagkakaroon na ng imbalance. Yung mga snakes and other predators na pwedeng kumain sa daga ay kumbaga bumaba yung population. So, mas tumaas naman yung biotic potential nitong mga ng mga rodents na to. So, ano yung mga perfect conditions na sinasabi ni Tutor Tony? First, or conditions na pwede makapag-contribute para mapataas yung biotic potential ng isang organism or a population of organism. First, adequate food and water supply. Ayan, so mga pala yan. So, nag-fest na sila sa, sa mga tanim ng mga kawawa nating farmers. Ayan, so no diseases. Siyempre, suitable habitat. Maganda yung habitat, especially kapag summer. Ayan. At saka, pwede rin tag-ulan, di ba? Kasi may water. Mas numang nag-grow yung mga, mga rice. Rice plants natin. And of course, no predators. Walang ibang uh, organism na pwedeng kumain sa kanila. Kaya dumadami sila ng gusto. Alright? Speaking of biotic potential din. Ayan, did you know that isa rin sa mga may matataas na biotic potentials ay ang mga insecto, mga insects. Ayan. So did you know that uh, 90% of the invertebrates or mga organisms natin sa earth ha, ay lahat 90% insects. Would you imagine that? And according to my research, around 1 million species na ng insects ang napapangalanan ng ating mga scientists. So ganun sila kabilis mag-reproduce. Reproduce mataas ang kanila biotic potential. Alright. Ito naman, ang, our, ang next na example dito is, ayan, mga factors na pwede mag-determine naman ng biotic potential. So, an example ko dito is yung mga sea turtles natin or mga pawikan. First, number of offspring per reproduction. Uh, if you will notice sa mga, kung nagbabasa kayo ng mga science books or if you feature din ito sa mga documentaries natin, di ba, yung mga pawikan, they lay their eggs sa shore, ayan, tatabunan nila. And of course, after some time, mag-hatch yung mga eggs. Ang dami nila. Pero uh, isa or dalawa lang dyan ang pwedeng mag-survive. So maraming eggs, pero very small lang yung number of population na pwedeng mag-survive at mag-grow as adult. So ganun yung uh, case ng ating mga sea turtles or pawikan. The second factor is chances of survival. So yun nga. 
So, hindi lahat ng mga baby turtles na yan or baby pawikans can survive. Kasi iba kakainin, yung iba mamamatay, they will be drowned. Next, number three is age of reproduction. At what age ba pwedeng mag-reproduce sa isang organism? Di ba? So, pwedeng at a young age. Pwede na sila after months of ano, growing, pwede na silang mag-reproduce. Pero tayo mga tao, di ba? So, it will take uh, two, de- two to three decades bago makapag-reproduce. Number four, age at which propagation starts. So, yan, applicable yan sa mga nag-undergo ng asexual reproduction. And finally, how frequently every individual repli- replicates. So, gano ba sila katagal magparami? Diba? So, nagkakatano din yan. So, gano katagal sila mag- just, uh, mag-grow? Let's say, for example, itong mga turtles, after mag-lay ng eggs ng nanay, ilang months or ilang... Ilang months or ilang weeks bago mag-hatch. Ay, mga tao, nine months, di ba? So, uh, those factors varies among living organisms. Sandaan ha, number of offspring per reproduction, chances of survival, age of reproduction, age at which propagation starts, and how frequently every individual replicates. Ayan, so... <laughs> Ayan. Familiar ba kayo sa ano na yan? <laughs> sa phrase yan, I will survive. Laban lang. Ayan. Uh, it reminded me of a commercial na isang pesticide brand or insecticide brand. <laughs> Parang kinanta na yung song na I will survive. So since we have learned that isa rin sa mga may mataas, matitindi, ang malakasan ng biotic potential ng mga ipis or cockroach, di ba? So they tend to really survive kahit uh, if exposed mo yan sa radiation or, or something. Ayan. So, ang motto nila or ang battle cry nila, I will survive. Ayan. Next, let's have uh, activity number four. Ayan. So, you were asked to look at the pictures and write something about each picture. So, as you can see, we have here a mother and child. We have here the mother pig and his or her piglets. And of course, we have dito So, human as one, pig, average eight, cat, two. At what age does each organism reproduce? So, may tinatawag tayo na puberty or sexual maturity. Ibig sabihin, ito yung age na kaya nang mag-reproduce na isang uh, living organism. For humans, as early as 12 years old, pwede na. Basta nakakapag-produce na ng egg cell or ng sperm cell for males. Pig, around five months. So, imagine that five months, pwede na, no? And cat, six months. Number three, what will happen if living things fail to reproduce? Siyempre, in the concept of survival, if organisms fail to reproduce, their population will decrease. And if this continues, this will lead to extinction. So, pwedeng mawala na or ma-wipe out na talaga ang kanilang species. And ayon naman natin mangyari yan. Sabi nga, di ba, I will survive. Number four, how can a population grow? So, paano ba? A certain population will grow when they have yung mga conditions kanina natin, di ba? Remember? Adequate food and water supply, no diseases, suitable habitat, and there are no predators para kainin sila. So, those are some of the factors para mag-grow ang isang population. Let us now uh, discuss the opposite of biotic potential. So we have environmental resistance. This refers to the factors that can limit, nililimit na yung growth ng isang population. So pwedeng uh, maraming predators, Ayan, may, may competition na nag exist kapag nagkaroon ng mga diseases, kulang na sa pagkain, at saka water supply, and nagkakaroon ng uh, there's an unsuitable or hindi conducive yung pinaka-environment or habitat. So, ang example ko dito is environmental resistance, mga drought na na-experience natin minsan, lalo na kapag panahon na El Nino, di ba? Or kapag nagkakaroon ng mga wildfires, yan, pinabalita yan sa US, sa Australia, and yung recent na nakita ko sa news. Ayan, so we have uh, yung mga kuala, mga kawawang kuala natin, no? So, that's the time na dyan na papasok yung role natin mga tao. And of course, uh, isa ng example ng environmental resistance is of course the spread of the coronavirus. Okay, 
Uh, one example, of course, is the extinction of uh, the major population of the dinosaurs. So, nagkaroon ng meteor impact. It affected uh, the system, yung pinaka-atmosphere natin. So, hindi na nag-penetrate yung sunlight, namatay most of the plants. And, kumbaga, nagkaroon ng chain reaction. Yung mga plant eaters, namatay. Yung mga nakadepende sa mga plant eaters, nagkaroon ng competition and then eventually they also die. So most of the organisms or the dinosaurs were wiped out on a certain uh, time or history sa ating planet Earth. So that's one example of environmental res uh, resistance. Okay, sa ating mga tao naman, ayan, so we have your feeding program means and of course, uh, yung food security, no, isa, isa yan sa mga major concerns natin sa Pilipinas. Hashtag, ayan, sa picture, <laughs> lugaw is essential, kawawang mga bata. So, sana hindi na humantong yung mga gantong, hindi na tayo makakita ng mga gantong situations no, in the future. And of course, we also, uh, one of the problems na nakinakaharap natin is yung supply natin ng usable, potable, clean uh, water na pwede natin magamit sa pang araw -araw. And of course, ayan, so we are also affected by the African swine flu, di ba? Kaya nga nagtaas yung ano eh, yung presyo ng mga pork, di ba? So they are being affected by certain diseases. Ayan, diseases is one of the env environmental resistance. Of course, kung sa animals affected, uh, plants, species are also affected minsan by fungus, by microorganisms or other pests. Ayun, so yun mga example natin na environmental resistance. And for our last term, ayan, so may kinatawag tayong carrying capacity. It is defined as the maximum number of individuals that an ecosystem can support. So looking at our diagram right here, ayan, so we have here two aquarium jars. So syempre, very obvious naman, di ba? So uh, the goldfishes here on the first uh, aquarium or fishbowl, they will not really survive kasi nga siksikan sila. So kulang sila sa space, kulang sila sa, sa water, nagkakaroon ng competition, and of course, sa dissolved oxygen. Unlike dito sa pangalawang uh, aquarium natin, ayan, so tatlo lang sila, nakangiti, yung dalawa, yung isa nag-alala sa isa, sa isa pang fishbowl. Ayan, so so first, first fishbowl natin, inix, uh, kumbaga, nag-exceed na yung carrying capacity niya. Kumbaga, hindi na kayang suportahan ng pinaka-habitat yung needs ng mga living organisms. If the population exceeds the carrying capacity of its environment, what will happen? Nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na overshoot. And we don't want that to happen. Okay? So that is what we call the carrying capacity. And to summarize the lesson about biotic at saka environmental resistance, uh, biotic potential of organisms makes the population increase while environmental resistance and the end limits the population on growing relentlessly. Okay, yung isa, uh, ini-increase. Pangalawa, uh, nililimit naman. So, kumbaga, sa nature, actually, may balance yan. Ginawa yan ni God, dinisign niya ni God na may balance. Pero minsan, nagkakaroon ng unbalance. Yun, yun ang ayaw nating mangyari. Okay. And for our last activity, activity number 6, page 10. So, tatandaan lang, uh, we have to, I just, I categorize or identify whether yung pinapakita sa picture ay biotic potential or environmental resistance. Let's do this quick. Alright. So, first is, of course, biotic potential. May kakayanan ang female na ito na makapag-reproduce. Ayan, snake eating a frog. Of course, environmental resistance kasi nga may predator, di ba? So, may, may, may risk. Third item natin, ayan, nagkakaroon na na heat stroke at ang kawawang uh, kalabaw natin dyan or perhaps meron siyang sakit. So that's an environmental resistance. Fourth item, ayan, as you, as you can observe, nagkakaroon ng competition between tigers para sa food. That's environmental resistance as well. And of course, si Lion King <laughs> at nakapagkudo siya ng tatlong cubs. Of course, that is defined or classified as a biotic potential. Ayan, so for our one of second to the last segment, what do you think? Oh, ayan, so konting ano lang tayo, statistics tayo dito, senior high school learners. During the 1900s, there were 1.6 billion people on Earth. So 1900s pa yun, ha? <laughs> Ngayon, today, there are over 7.8 billion people worldwide. So based yan sa worldometers that info. 
So, why do you think the population continues to grow? So, bakit ba parami ng parami ang mga tao? So, the world will there come a time na mag darating tayo dun sa tinatawag na overshoot? Yung mag exceed na yung carrying capacity ng planeta Earth? So, is there a limit to the growth of the population? So, what do you think? So, pwede, uh, you can send to me your answers on that by a PM sa Facebook Messenger. Ayan, pwede nyo rin email, ma'am. May atit, uh, pa-flash ko yung email, add ko later on. Okay? So, what do you think? Ayan, screenshot nyo na. And then, send to me your answers para ma-feature ko kayo sa ating final week na session. Next week, week number 8. Ayan, for our hashtag, be inspired and hashtag, be blessed segment. So, according to Jonas Sok, American virologist and medical researcher. Ano sabi niya dyan? Ayan. Ang tahimik na ating comment section. Ayan. Okay. So, hi. May bagong ano, ano comment. Peter Paul Pabalate. Hello po. Good afternoon po. So, I hope you enjoyed our session. We're almost through with our sessions now. Uh, ang sabi ni Jonas So, again, American virologist and medical researcher. Eventually, will realize that if we destroy the ecosystem, we destroy ourselves. So, tandaan, no? So, tayo, primarily, sabi nga sa Bible, di ba? So, we, we are given the responsibility as stewards ng kalikasan or ng Mother Earth. So, let's do our part. So, alam natin medyo, nandun na tayo sa, ano, sa, sa pangamba na pwedeng masira a part or a big portion ng at, ating planeta. So, wag na nating uh, palakihin pa yung problem. So let's make our part maliit man yan or malaki. Maging uh, inspiration tayo at maging blessing sa iba. So wag mahihiya na magpakita ng ano, ng uh, iba kasi nahihiya eh, mga teenagers. Okay, mahihiya. So there's nothing to to be ashamed of. no. So bas for as long as you're doing the right things, sobrang ano na yan, good point na yan kay, kay, kay God sa heaven. Alright? So be inspired, be, be an inspiration, be a blessing to others. And that ends our Earth and Life Science quarter for week. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> week number seven. So you can uh, reach me through email, sir tonymaypa.gmail.com. Check me na ng Facebook, Wakelet, at Mr. Voice Educator PH YouTube channel. Ayan. So thank you so much for joining me. Sa ating uh, meaningful. Yes, meaningful and worthwhile session for Earth and Life Science. So I see you all next week. Ayan, so stay safe. God bless po sa ating lahat. Susunod na si Tutor Cat for Media and Information Literacy. This has been Sir Tony. Goodbye and God bless. Bye po.